Shabbat, Perik Tetzayin, Mishnah Vav. Chapter 16, 6 Mishnah. Hanochri eino metzuvah la Shabbat. A Gentile, someone who is not Jewish, is not commanded to keep Shabbat. Vechen, en Israel muzhar al shvitat hanochri. And also a Jew doesn't need to make sure that the non-Jew keeps Shabbat. Ela im kenu avdo. When does a Jew need to make sure that a non-Jew does keep Shabbat? When the non-Jew is a slave. But since there's no such things today, there's no situation where a non-Jew is, is supposed to rebuke him or Can doing something for Shabbat. Work for him? Avdo, like... No, well, uh, Avdo is the only one. Avdo. Shabbos boy. No. Oh, we, oh. That's exactly what we're going to discuss. Oh, okay. This is the discussion oh, okay. about Shabbos. Okay. Going. Well, for you. Yeah. Shabbos. We, we, that's oh. exactly what the mission is going to be. Aval asur li Israel, but it is forbidden to a Jew, lomar le nochri, to say to a non-Jew, sheyase melacha bishvilo, that he should do work for him. By the way, many people today take a lot of leniency that you're not supposed to. Yeah, and they think that it's okay to yeah. tell somebody, yeah, he's a guy, he can do it. Yeah. Sheken, it says, what's the problem? He's not commanded to keep Shabbat. Sheken amira le nochri shvut. There's a concept that's saying, saying something to a non-Jew, it's called shvut. Shvut means the rabbis told you, don't do it. Don't tell a non-Jew. It's not from the Torah. It's not commanded from the Torah, but the rabbi says, don't tell an angel to do it. Klomar, which means, The sages prohibited it because of shvut. Look in the beginning of the Masechet, when it comes discussing shvut. The Rambam explains, it says, why does, if the God did not obligate an angel to work on Shabbat, what do you care to tell him? What's the problem? הרמב״ם מבאר הטעם, הרמב״ם explains the reason. כדי שלא תהיה השבת קלה ביניהם. It says once, twice, three times, four times, you need the nanju to do your job. Okay, can you do this, can you do this, can you do this, can you do this? You say, okay, so, so you get used to the fact that all the things get done, and afterwards what's going to be יבואו לעשות בעצמם. You say, it's not a big deal, what does he do? He puts on the light switch to turn off the light switch, what's the big deal? I'm going to put on the light switch, turn off the light switch. So it says, because it makes it easy in your eyes to do these melachot, to do these jobs, therefore it is prohibited. Beram, so this is according to the Rambam. במחילתא דרשו זה מן הכתוב, in the מחילתא they learned it from another verse. It says, כל מלאכה לא יעשה בהם. Every job you should not do in them. Who's the them? The them is the נוכרי. שלא יעשה נוכרי מלאכתך. It means, it's, it's not just the rabbis, it's not just the שבות. It says a specific, yeah, that the nanju is not allowed to do your job. משנתנו דנה בכיבוי דלקה על ידי נוכרי. Since we were talking about fire from the previous Mishnah, our Mishnah is discussing fire. Are you allowed to tell a non-Jew to come and put out the fire? That's the question. Now, obviously, we're not talking about a case where it's dangerous. We're talking about a case where it's not dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. If it's dangerous, then you're allowed to put it. We're talking about a case where it's not dangerous. Your cabinet is going to get to catch on fire. You don't want to lose money. Are you allowed to tell him? Hey, come, take it out. Nochri sheba lechabot. So the neighbor saw that your uh, cabinet is on fire, and he, he comes to help. He comes to extinguish it. Be Shabbat et aglaka shenaflav beto shel Israel. He comes to extinguish the fire that fell in the house of a Jewish person. En omrim lo kabe. You do not tell him extinguish it. Shamira le nochri shvut because. Like we discussed before, saying to a Nukhri, the Rebbe is prohibited. Like we discussed. But you also don't tell him, you also don't tell him, do not extinguish it. Also, you don't have to tell him not to. To tell him, do not extinguish the fire. Why? The truth is, מאחר שעושה זה על דעת עצמו, he's doing it on his own accord, he's doing it on his own knowledge, but it's a problem, he's doing it for you. 
not only is doing it for you, after Shabbat, he's probably expecting something back. He's probably expecting something back. Let's say, even in the case that you know for sure that he's expecting something back, you are allowed to let, let him do it, and after Shabbat you can take care of him. Okay. In other words, you're allowed to do it. And according. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're allowed to do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> even, <laughs> though, <laughs> even though you know that he will probably, after Shabbat, ask for some money for his work. Even then, you're allowed to let him just do his work. Also, if they're gonna if the non Jews, so how much more so for it with the Jew? That's the idea. Why? Because it's not your responsibility to tell him to do something or not to do something. He's a grown man, he can decide. It's between him and God, and God allows him. Al Israel, it's not your responsibility, Klomar, which means she and Israel Muzara Shutat Nochri. It said, You are not warned to make sure that the Nanju doesn't work. Bagmara Amru, She'af hetiru bedleka lomar. In the Gemara it says, when it, ca- when it comes to a Nanju, completely, um, you're not allowed to tell him to do it. To a Jew. Yeah, to a Jew, sorry. But when it comes to a Nanju, you can say, guys, don't worry, after Shabbos we'll take care of it. Okay. Yeah, you're even allowed to do that. How do you say it? Kolo mechabe in Amafsid, it says, if you extinguish it, don't worry, you're not going to lose money, you're not going to lose money. You don't worry, your time is going to get <laughs> rewarded, in other words, you're not going to lose money. That's when it comes to a Nanju, everything. What about a minor? Now, what's a minor? We're not going to discuss now. There's many definitions of a minor. There's Lifnei Chinuch, Acharei Chinuch. I'm not quite sure what he's talking about. There's probably many variations. But a small Jewish child that is not obligated in commandments, whether it's before Chinuch or after Chinuch, that's not the point. Aval katan shelob sheba lechabot, a small child that comes to extinguish the fire, et ad leka b'shabbat, en shomim lo. We don't do whatever he wants us to do. That's what we mean, en shomim lo. We don't tolerate it like that. Klomar she'en notnim lo lechabot. We don't let him extinguish the fire. He's not obligated in commandments. What's the problem? Mipnei she'shvidatan alehem. Because your responsibility is to make sure that the guy keeps Shabbat even though he's a minor. Shemuzarim al shvitat katan. Because you are warned on the, shav, on the small person keeping Shabbos. Now, l- l- let's just explain this a little bit because it needs to be explained. There are some things where it's not your responsibility to keep the katan. For example, you've got a two-year-old. Today it's not a problem because people don't play outside. In the, in the old time, to go in the time of the Mishnah, this two-year-old used to run outside all day long with the, next to the house, you know? And a two-year-old goes around next to the house and he sees a bug, he sees over here a worm, what does he do with it? Especially at those times, he sees a locust, and he knows locust is what you do with locusts. Really? You eat, so, and maybe this locust or this bug, so he eats bugs. You know, now the question is, is it your responsibility to stop him from eating bugs all day long? Because if it is, the mother can do nothing. When the kid is outside, it's her responsibility to make sure the kid doesn't eat bugs all day day long. She can never leave him alone. And that wasn't done. So it says, how come the mother is allowed to sit in the kitchen and do her stuff while the child is running around and eating bugs? It says, because it's not your responsibility to make sure that the kid doesn't eat, it's kosher. He's not, he's not, he didn't get to the age of education yet. Once he gets to the age of education, then it's your responsibility. So maybe over here, that's why the Mishnah comes. Maybe over here it's the same. Okay. Maybe it's not your responsibility to tell him not to do something. So he says, no, 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 when it comes to Shabbat, it's not like the bugs. Uh-huh. It is your yes, responsibility. Yes. That's why the, the Mishnah is... Uh, mm, yes. Okay. tatan alehem. Bagmara mevoar. Oh, he actually says that. Bagmara mevoar shomnam alachai shekatan aochel de nevelot that a small person who eats uh, unkosher food en bedin metzuvim lafrisho laaniyah mizeh. You don't have the responsibility to tell him not not to. Aval kan be medubar be katan haosel edat aviv. Over here, you're talking about a small person who's doing it for his father. He's doing it 
In other words, they... Because he's going to make his father happy. That's right. כלומר, כלומר שיודע שהכיבוי נוח לאביו. He knows that the father likes it. ועושה זה בשבילו, and he's doing it for him. כל כך חייבים למחות בידו. Therefore, you have to rebuke with them. So what's the difference between them? When the small child is eating the bugs, he's not doing it for his father. He's doing it for himself. <laughs> Over here, he's doing something for you, so you have to stop him. That's the difference. ברם, בנוכרי בחגון זה מותר. When an angel does something for you, then you can let him do. שאף על פי שיודע שנוח הכיבוי לישראל, even though he knows he's giving you some value, מכל מקום להנעת עצמו מתכוון. The reason he's really doing it is because he knows he's going to get some money in the end. שיודע הוא שיקבל שכר טרחתו. He knows he's going to earn some money from it. אוקיי. Okay.